Okay, this lecture is going to cover the major functions and structures of the female reproductive system. Okay, of course the main function of the female reproductive system is reproduction itself, right? Just making progeny, reproduction of species. But specific to the female is also the production of eggs. Right? Eggs are released through a process called ovulation about every 28 days and typically it alternate side, one from the right ovary and the left ovary, and continuing back and forth like that. Um, and then also the production of female sex hormones. Now at the end we're going to talk about the main female sex hormone, estrogen, but there are many others involved in the process. Some of the other key hormones are LH, which is luteal hormone, FSH, which stands for a follicular stimulating hormone, and progesterone. Now of the major structures, of course, there are the ovaries. Those are the female gonads. Um, these are responsible for the actual production of the eggs and the sex hormones that we had mentioned before. Again, there's a right and a left ovary. They're paired. And these are sort of the equivalents. Um, males also have a pair structure that makes their sex cells, the testes. These are sort of the equivalent of those structures. Um, a follicle is a structure in an ovary that actually makes the egg. So inside a follicle is where an egg matures and gets ready. And it also produces progesterone, again one of the key female reproductive system hormones. The oocyte is just another way of saying a developing egg. So not a fully mature egg, but one that's in the process of getting there. And then of course the egg is the female sex cell. It has half the number of chromosomes as a typical somatic or body cell. Um, and so in a human, a normal cell would have 46 chromosomes, so a sex cell, and this is the same for males and females, only has half of that, has 23. And that's because when the egg and the sperm combine, right, that's how you get half of your DNA from your mom and half from your dad. It's because those sex cells only have half the number of chromosomes in them. There's also a structure called the uterine tubes, and these are what conduct the egg toward the uterus from the ovaries. Now, I have AKA there because they're also known as something else, which is probably the more common name, or at least the name that people are more familiar with. So take a minute and see if you can think of the name of the other name for uterine tubes, which is a structure that conducts those eggs. All right, hopefully you came up with fallopian tubes, that's correct. And in the fallopian tubes or the uterine tubes, that's where fertilization actually occurs. Um, there's also the uterus, which is um, the female organ where a fetus will develop. So if an egg does get fertilized, it goes to the uterus, gets implanted in the uterine wall, and starts to develop there. And then finally, the vagina which is the female copulatory organ and it's also the birth canal. So you can see on that structure the vagina is what connects to the outside and then it goes directly to the uterus. And there's a structure that's not on the slide that's in between called the cervix and many of you have probably heard of that as well. Um, cervix means neck, right? And we're talking about the root of it. And so the reason that that's called the cervix, that's right junction between the vagina and the uterus is because the cervix is the neck of the uterus. So that's how it got its name. As I said at the beginning, we were going to talk about estrogen a little bit more. Now this is the key female sex hormone. It is secreted by the ovaries. If you remember, those are the paired structures where eggs actually are developed. And um, estrogen really kicks in at puberty. And it's what stimulates the growth of the uterus and the vagina. Basically it starts preparing the woman to be able to carry a child. Not to say that it's recommended that it happens at puberty by any means, but that your body is getting ready to be able to do that. Um, estrogen is also responsible for the matur maturation of eggs, so getting those eggs ready and mature so when ovulation happens they could potentially be fertilized. Um, they also, and, and finally estrogen at puberty, you can kind of think of some of the other things that happen, but different sexual characteristics um, that are common to females kind of kick in, like menstruation, um, widening of hips, larger breasts, things like that. And that's it.